JM Radio presents Art, Rest, and Ghosts, our week away in Beacon, New York. So off we went, Brooklyn to Beacon. Bags, check. Water bottle, check. Directions, check. So over the summer, we went up to Beacon, New York, which I don't know if you've ever heard of Beacon. Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, it's a little it's a little town, surprisingly very close to the city but far enough where you like you completely feel like you're you know, you've gotten away, you're out of the city. You can relax. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. So okay. we um we booked a few nights at a bed and breakfast. Mm-hmm. This gorgeous like 1911 colonial I mean, but a huge house, right? It had, like, servants' quarters. But we chose Beacon because Dia Beacon is up there. It's a gorgeous museum. Okay. Roughly 60 miles north of New York City, Beacon is a hotspot for contemporary art and culture. It's also known for its bed and breakfasts and the beautiful waterfall of Fishkill Creek that runs right through downtown Beacon. Nice. We get up there, and it's this gorgeous old house. It's just a mother and daughter team who, who kind of run it. You know, mostly the mother, who's a fantastic cook. And it's just like... Lucky. Yeah, it was her breakfasts were to die for. So, you know, you, you come into the house, and it's this, you know, old, super wide wooden staircase that divided the house. You know, she takes us up to our room, and our room was on the one side of the house that... To use the bathroom, you had to go out another door on the other side of the room, which there was another set of stairs that went down into the kitchen. Because... Okay. Yeah. It would have been servants, right? Exactly. So okay. so when you came out of our room, there was like, like another little sort of step down and a stairwell, and there was a bedroom and a bathroom. So that bedroom probably would have been, back in those days, the servants, mm-hmm. you know, quarters or whatever. And So we had to go out of our room to use the bathroom over there. So I bring this up because, like, we're surrounded by a staircase on one side and a staircase on the other. Right. So everything's great. We go into town, blah, blah, blah. We start to think about what we're going to do the next day. We come up to our room. You know, it's up in the country, so, of course, you know, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock feels much later than in the city. Right. So we go to bed, or we try to go to bed. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. So this is where the fun begins. So we go to bed, and... Right now, we're the only guests in the bed and breakfast. We just hear, like, people on the stairs all night long. Like going walking or just yeah, standing? Yeah, walking. Going up and down the stairs. Because they were old and crickety and creaky and... The people on the stairs? The stairs. Okay. So the whole time, we're in our room going, are guests coming in? The like, footsteps on the stairs yeah, for guests to were be coming super in frightening because they weren't just say, well, on the same level uh, that we the were stairs on. to the right, the stairs to the left. They above like, us, but there was together, nowhere you know? else right, to right. go. So I finally fall asleep. So the first night, I wake up frozen in fear, like terror. I can't move. My body feels like it's on fire. <laughs> and Did I, you hear something that you woke up? or you just No, I just, I woke up stricken with fear. And my body felt like it was on fire, and I couldn't move, and I'm just laying there. And I hadn't felt that way since I was like a little girl. I used to have this recurring dream. Right. That used to, I just used to wake up in fear, and I couldn't call out to my mom. I was so scared to even do that much. So I was just, what's going on? So I, di- I didn't want to wake up Sarah, but she did wake up. She's like, what's going on? I'm like, I don't know. I, something's going on. Something's going on in here. I don't know what it is. I'm totally afraid right now. I said, all this movement on the stairs, I don't know what's going on. So we were like, okay, let's just go to sleep. Because Sarah didn't, didn't wake up with anything. So I was like, okay, just, I said to myself, just close your eyes. Don't look around. Right, right. Because I didn't want to see anything, if anything was there. <laughs> and go to sleep. Just close yeah, your yeah. eyes and go to sleep. Okay. So the next day, blah, blah, blah. We go to the sculpture park. We're doing our artsy-fartsy stuff. <laughs> Come back. They actually had an in-ground pool, which was delightful outside. Outside of the bed and breakfast? Yeah, in their backyard. They had an in-ground pool, which is so rare. Mm-hmm. Well, that must not have been original. No, that wasn't original. Yeah. Right. But, but it was a nice addition to the to the week, to, you know, to the week up there. So, um, again, now it's time to go to bed. <laughs> I'm already freaked out. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sarah's sort of freaked out because I freaked her out. Right. So now we're like, well, I guess we have to go to bed. 
I woke up. So I we go to so bed hot. and Mostly it wasn't so much chest, activity on the stairs. And my torso. Now Sara wakes up. The weirdest thing was I felt like there was feeling like her body was on fire. This ethereal thing totally in fear, above me dreaming she had dreamt that someone was above room. her like hovering above her I was her. so hot and I was so yeah. frightened yeah I swear I to god I did not want to move now that same night I see a green laser light in the one corner of the room moving around what? yeah and I'm like okay what is this so now Sarah's afraid I see a light moving around and I, and I get up and I'm thinking where could this light be coming from but it was it was very small and it was green and it moved around a couple times. But whenever we woke up, everything seemed to kind of like stop, you know. Mm-hmm. So now we're both like, "Oh my god, I don't even want to go back to sleep." <laughs> right. So we just kind of like cuddle and spoon. <laughs> right. We got close together. Save me. And we were like, "All right, just." Again, to myself, I was like, close your eyes, because I don't, if there are ghosts in the room, I don't want to see them. Just. No, no, right, right. <laughs> you be over there. I'll, I'll be over right. here. Let's just call it. Let's, great. Yeah. <clears throat> so the next morning, we go down for breakfast, and the daughter happened to be there helping her mother. And the daughter comes over, and I was like, hey, anything ever happen in this house? She knew right away. She just cut me right off, Stephanie. She's like, oh my God, did you see the sisters? And I went, the sis, no. I I said, no, I didn't see, (laughs) no, and I'm glad I didn't. Like, like none sisters? No, just, no, just like the two women, like the, the, I guess she she was referring to them as the sisters. And I was like, "Uh, no, but definitely we've been experiencing. And she's like, oh, I have friends who are kind of like the whole family's empathic or psychic. Whenever they've come to stay, the room across from us, okay? So whenever two women happen to stay in that room, these, quote-unquote, two sisters show themselves. Interesting, but only to the psychics. Or just, to, to it, they, they actually show themselves when they're in that room. Huh. We were across the hall. Okay. So I was like, okay, well, that makes sense, but at the same time, I've never had an experience like that before, and I've never quite right. seen a ghost, at least not that I remember. <laughs> and you're definitely, like, psychic. Exactly. So yeah. right. we were like, okay, that's interesting. And then Sara and I are thinking, sisters? You know, as a lesbian couple, we were like, maybe back in the day, they were lovers. And whenever sisters. two women happen to stay together... They show themselves. I don't know. Doesn't that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, the lesbian ghosts. So, of course, that night, <laughs> we really don't want to go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so, just by chance, we were like, all right, we have the computer. Let's put some Netflix on or something. I was like, we haven't, uh, we haven't watched The L Word in a long time. <laughs> right? So then Sarah and I are thinking, well, maybe we'll give these two sisters a little thrill. Here's, you know, here's what you're missing in this day and age. You know, honey. like a hundred years later, like, so yeah. just, well, so whatever. So we just, we watched a few episodes trying to stay up. You know, we thought we would give these sisters a thrill. <laughs> so we go to bed. And of course, so the following night, like it happens again. All of a sudden, I woke not, up. Not, not to the. And I was looking for uh, the shape of, of two women. Because now heads. we're both experiencing. But it, then I realized know, I was looking at the on lamp the stairs shade, again. So I closed my eyes. The light was in the room again, and Sara saw the light open this your time. Eyes and then well, I we opened my eyes, and in the middle of the we ceiling, like, okay, if they wanted to hurt us, they would have would have hurt us by now. That was yeah, what, moving what are they trying to say, right? And I was so say, frightened, or, so I figured, but I closed okay, my eyes so quickly. I'm terrified because I didn't want to meet but the ghosts. Then I was like, well, if they wanted to hurt us, we would have been hurt by now. Light orbs are also known as ghost or spirit orbs, often thought to be the souls of people that hang around the living, causing some to believe that orbs might be angels, spirit guides, or deceased loved ones. So then in the morning... Like, we're packing up. And, of course, you know, this is our supposed to be our, like, couple of days away. We didn't get any sleep. <laughs> right. <laughs> we didn't get it any sleep. was so <laughs> We're packing up, and I'm, I'm there, and I'm putting stuff in my suitcase, my little bag. And I look on either side of the bed, the head of the bed. Did you see this? I said, Sarah, oh, my God. I said, look at the pictures above the bed. 
Now, this is the weirdest thing. We didn't notice until we were leaving. On either side of the bed was a picture with two women in it. What? What kind of, like, just like this? Just like, uh, you know, pictures from like the 20s or something. But not like okay. romantic, just pictures of happened to be two women in each picture. Interesting. And we didn't notice until we were leaving. Oh my God. Isn't that weird? That is so weird. So we leave, we come home, we come back to Brooklyn. And of course, like for two weeks, it took me two weeks before I could actually sleep through the night. Really? Did you, you didn't experience the same thing or you just kept thinking about it? Yeah, I was at that point, I was just paranoid. And I was like, every little noise, if I saw a light shift, um, right. you know, I was just, I was waking oh. up. I was afraid. I didn't know if something was in the room. Like, yeah, it took two weeks. And then finally I was like, all right, I got to let this go. So uh, anyway, that's, that's, that's the Beacon story. There's, you know. You know, what's interesting about that is that, I mean, I wouldn't call you necessarily psychic, but you're definitely intuitive. So maybe, and Sarah is definitely intuitive. So maybe you guys were just picking up on that. I, I guess. I don't know. But like everything from the light in the room. And there I was. To the movement on the stairs. Thinking that we stairs, were going to have the most right. relaxing, Clearly something was going on. And then, vacation. you know, maybe... It was not wonderful. Maybe because it wasn't it was the so room stressful. Because that they every were night or before it was time to go to bed, revealed themselves, you never or maybe knew just Sarah and I was going to happen. Not comfortable enough not to fun. actually see them. Maybe they just found the right lesbians at the right time. <laughs> <laughs> Art, rest, and ghosts are a week away in Beacon, New York. Created and produced by Joanne C. Mafia. For more information, please visit JM Radio on PRX.org.